Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent re Mars. I said reInvent, oh my, reInvent, months away. ReMars, machine learning, automation, robotics, and space. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. Got an exciting guest here bringing on, a special guest, more robots. Robots are welcome on theCUBE. We're going to have that segment here. Mike Dooley, co founder and CEO of Labrador Systems. Mike, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks Thank for coming you. on. Thank you so much. Yeah, Labrador Systems, we're a company that's developing a new type of assistive robot for people in the home. And you know, our mission is really to help people live independently. And so we're about to show a robot that's, it looks like my, what, what used to be in a warehouse or other places, but it's being designed to be both robust enough to operate in real world settings, help people that may be aging and using a walker wheelchair or cane, could have early onset health conditions like Parkinson's and things like that. So, so let, me, let yeah. me set this up first before you get into the, sure. uh, the demo, because I think here at Remars, one of the things that's coming out of the show, besides the cool vibe, right. is that materials handling isn't the only thing you've seen with robotics. Yeah, you're seeing yeah, a yeah. lot more life industrial impact. And this is yeah. an example of one of that, isn't it? Yeah, we just actually got an award. It's a Joseph Eggenberger was the first person to actually put robots in factories and automation. And in doing that, um, he set up a grant for robots going beyond that to help people live in it. So we're the first recipient of that. But yeah, I think that robots, they're not the, what you think about with Rosie yet. <laughs> we're a long way from that, but they're, they can do really meaningful things. And before we get the demo, your mission here and what you're going to show here is a lot of hard work and we yeah. know how hard it is. What's the mission, what's the vision? The mission is to help people live more independently on their own terms. Uh, we're, there's, it's an innate part of the human condition that at some point in our lives, it becomes more difficult to move ourselves or move things around it, and that has a huge impact on our independence. So when we're putting this robot in pilots, we're helping people try to regain degrees of independence, be more active, deal with whatever, whatever situation they want, but under their terms, and have, have control over their life. Okay, well let's get into it. May I offer you a glass of water? Well, you know, I have a robot that just happens to be really good <laughs> at delivering things, including water. Um, we just actually pulled these out of our refrigerator in our last demo, so why don't we bring over the uh, retriever, and so we're going to command it to come on in. So this is a Labrador Retriever. These robots have been in homes. This robot itself has been in homes helping people do activities like this. It's able to sort of go from place to place. It automatically navigates itself, uh, just like we've been called a self-diving shelf, um, as an example. But it's meant to be very friendly, can come to a position like this could be by my armchair, and it would automatically park. And then I could do something like I can pick up, okay, I want some water, and maybe I want to drink it out of a cup, and I can do this. And if I have a cough or something else, cough drops, my phone, yeah. all sorts of things can be in there. Um, so the purpose of the retriever is really to be this extra pair of hands to keep things close by and move things. And it can automatically adjust to any height or position. And if I, even if I block it like a safety, it, it stops. And someone who's say disabled or can't move, or is recovering or has some, is aging or whatever yeah. the case is, this comes to them. It's autonomous in its sense, is that how it works? Or is yeah. it guided, how does it work? It works on a series of bus stops. So the, in robotics we call those waypoints, but when we're talking to people, the bus stops are the places you want it to go. You have a bus stop by the front door, your kitchen sink, the refrigerator, your armchair, the laundry machine, your closet. <laughs> and with that simple metaphor, we, we train the robot in a couple hours, we create all these routes, just like a subway map, and then the robot is autonomous. So I can hit a button, I can hit my cell phone, or I can say Alexa, ask Lab One to come to the kitchen. The robot will autonomously navigate through everything, go around the pets, park itself, and it raises and lowers to bring things within reach. So I'm sitting, and it might lower itself down so I can just comfortably get something. I'm at the kitchen, I, it could just go right to the level of the countertop, so it's very easy for someone that has an issue to move yeah. things with, with limited uh, ch challenges. And this really illustrates to this show, again, yeah. talk about the impact here. We're at a historic moment. In robotics, we are. Aren't we? Yeah. What, what's your reaction to that? Take, tell your share your I, well, vision. Of that. I've been in robotics for 25 years, um, and I started. I actually started working actually at Lego and launching Lego Mindstorms at the end of the 90s. So I have like CEO. Just last night again, they gush over like you did that. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm pretty old school. <laughs> and so we've my career. I've been working through from toys onto like robotic floor cleaners. Yeah. The algorithms that are on Roomba today came from the startup that we were all part of. We're, we're moving things to be bigger and bigger and have a bigger impact. What's it feel like? I mean, because yeah. I mean, I can see the experience, and by the way, 
it's hardcore robotics communities out there, but now it's so mainstream, it's opening up the aperture of robotics. Yeah. It's the prime time is right now, and it's an inflection point. Well, and it's also a point where we desperately need it. So we have incredible workforce shortages. <laughs> and it's not that we're, these robots are not to take people jobs away, it's to do the work that people don't want to do and try to make, you know, free them up for things that are more important. Yeah. In senior care, that's the high touch. We want caregivers to be helping people get out of their bed, help them safely move from place to place. Things that robots aren't at yet, yeah. but for getting the garbage, for getting a drink, or giving the person the freedom to say, do I want to ask my caregiver or my spouse to do that, or do I want to do it myself? Yeah. And so robots can be an incredibly liberating experience if they're, yeah. if they're done in the right way and they're done well, in a human Well, it's a choice. It comes, actually comes down to choice. I remember this argument way back when, oh, ATM's yeah. going to kill the bank teller. Yeah. In fact, more bank tellers emerged. Right, yeah. And so you, the, the choices come out there, yeah. and, but there's still more advances to do. What, is you, what do you see as milestones for the industry as you start to seeing better handling? better voice activation, cameras on board, I noticed some cameras in there. Yeah. So we're starting to see the, some of the smaller, faster, cheaper it's, it's Especially, yeah, faster, cheaper is what we're after. So can we reduce, so like the gyros that are on this type of robot used to be like in the tens of thousands <laughs> of dollars 20 or 30 years ago. And, and then when you started seeing Roomba and the floor cleaners come out, those started, what happened was basically the gyro on here that what's happening on consumer electronics, the ability for the iPhone to play you know, the game and turn and, and do portrait and landscape, that actually is what enables all these robots to clean your floors to do very tight angles. All, what we're doing is this migration of consumer electronics then gets robbed yeah. and, uh, and, and adopted over in, in that. So it's really about, it's, I, it's not that you're going to see things radically change, it's just that you're going to see more and more applications get more sophisticated and become more affordable. Our target is to bring this for yeah. a few hundred dollars a month into people's yeah. homes yeah. Um, and make that economy work for as many people as possible. Yeah, Mike, what a great, great illustration, a great point there. Now, on your history, looking forward, okay, smaller, faster, cheaper, yeah. you're going to see a human aspect. So technology's kind of getting out of the way now. Yeah. You got a lot in the cloud, you got machine learning, yeah. big theme here. There's a human creative side now going to be a big part of this. Yeah. Can you talk about like how you see that unfolding? Because again, younger people going to come in, you got a lot more things yeah. to pre-build. I just saw a Swami on stage saying, oh, we, we write subroutines automatically with machine learning. Like, yeah. oh my God, that's so cool. Like, so more is yeah. coming for, to, for builders right. to build. What's the playbook going to look like? How do you see the human it, aspect, creative, I, crafting, building? I, I, it's, you know, it's a hard future to predict. I think the issue is that the humans are always going to have to be more clever than the AI. <laughs> you know, I, I can't say that enough, is that AI can solve some things and it can get smarter and smarter. You task that over and then let's work on the things it can't do. And I think that's intellectually challenging. Like, yeah. that, and, I, and I think we have a long way to go uh, to sort of keep on pushing that forward. So the whole mission is people get to do more interesting things with their life, more dynamic. Think about what the machines should be working on yeah. and then move on to the next thing. Well, a lot of good healthcare implications, yeah. uh, senior living, people yeah. who are rebuilding themselves. All, all those are plus, yeah. Now that you have um, this kind of, almost a perfect storm of innovation coming, yeah. and I just think it's going to be the beginning. You're going to see a lot of young people come in. And yeah. a lot of people in school now, going down to the elementary school level, yeah. are really immersed in robotics. They're born with it, and certainly as they get older, what kind of disciplines do you see coming into robotics? It used to be pretty clear, yeah. right? Nerdy, builder, uh, builder. Now it's like, well, I got my can write you code. Sort of, yeah, my, my co-founder and CEO has a good example. Anybody we interview, we say, we really like it if you think of yourself as an astronaut going on to a space mission. And, and it's really appropriate being here at Ari Mars, is that Normally the astronaut has one specialty, but they have to know enough of the other skills to be able to help out in case of an emergency. Robotics is so complex. Yeah. There's, so, there's mechanical, there's electrical, there's software, there's perceptual, there's user yeah. interface. All of those fuse together. So when we're trying to do a demo and something goes wrong, I can't say, well I only do mechanical. Uh, yeah, you you really have to have a system. So I think if any system architects, People that, yeah. if, you're going to, if, you're, if you're going to be, if mechanical is your thing, you better learn a little bit electrical and software. Yeah. If software is your thing, you better not just write code. Because yeah. you need to understand where you're... you're well, your, back in the old days, you had to know Fortran to run any yeah, instrumentation yeah, right. yeah, in the right. old days. And mm -hmm. So same kind of vibe. So what does that impact on the teamwork side? Because now I can imagine, okay, mm -hmm. you got some general purpose knowledge, so right. math, science, all the disciplines, right. but the specialties there, I love that. Right. Now teamwork. Yeah. Because you, you know, I could be a generalist, but at some point, there's another component that I'm going to need to call my teammate for. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you have to, have, yeah, so there, it, 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 yeah, we're a small <laughs> team, so it's a little bit easier right now, but <laughs> even the technology, so like there's a, what this is, this runs on Linux and it runs on ROS, which is the robotic operating system. The modules are, 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 the, are, are, are sorry, the modular, I mean redundant there, but the, the part that makes the robot go, okay, I'm going to command it to go here, it's going to go around, it sees an obstacle, this module kicks in, even the elements become modular. So that's part of how teams work, is that, and, and Amazon has a rule around that, is that everything has to have an API. Yeah. I have to be able to express my work in the way that somebody else can come in and talk to it in a very easy way. So you're also going away from like, sort of like the hidden code that only I touch. You can't have yeah. ownership of that. You have to let your team understand how it works and let them control it and edit it. Well, super exciting. Yeah. First of all, great to bring yeah. robots on the Cube set. Thanks yeah. to your team here doing that. Yeah. Um, talk about the company. Um, put a plug in, what are you guys doing? Sure. Uh, raising money, getting more staff, more sales. We're, give, give us a quick yeah, commercial. Yeah, so we, we closed a seed round. So we've been around, it's actually five years next month. Um, did pre-seed and then we closed the seed round that we announced back at CES. So we debuted the Retriever for the first time. We had it under wraps, we had it in people's homes for a year before we did that. Um, I, Amazon was one of our early investors and they actually co-led on this last round along with our friends at iRobot. So, yeah. uh, so we've raised that, we're right in the next phase of deploying this, especially going more into senior living now yeah. that that's opening up with COVID coming down and looking at helping these workforce issues where there's that crisis. So we'll be raising later this year. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we're starting to sort of do the preview for Series A. We're starting to take those pre-orders for robots and for LOIs. And then our goal is, we're, and we're actually already at the factory. So yeah. we've been converting this, these, there's a version of this robot underway right now at the factory that will probably have engineering units at the end of this year. Yeah. Goal is for uh, full production with all the supply chain issues for second half of, of next yeah. year. Well, congratulations, it's a great product. Yeah. And I got to ask you, what's on the roadmap? How you see this product unfolding? What's the wish list look like? If you had all the dough in the world, uh, what would you do next? What would you be putting on there? Sure. If you had the magic wand, what's happening? It's a couple <laughs> variables. I think it's scale. So it's driving, the, this whole thing is designed to go down in cost which improves basically accessibility. More people can afford it. The health system, Medicare, or those yeah. sorts of folks see it. One, so basically, get us into production and get us into volume is one part. I think the other ones is adding layers. I, what we, when you see our presentation and the speech we're doing tomorrow, we see this as a force multiplier for a lot of other things in healthcare. So if I bring the blood pressure cuff like we have on the retrieval, I can be a physical reminder to take your medication, to take the, my, my readings, or we were just having a conversation with some of our friends of Amazon is bring an echo show to you when you want to have a conversation and take it away when you don't. It, it, think about that metaphor of how do I want to live my life and what do I have control over? And then on top of it, the sensors on the robot, they're pretty sophisticated. So in my case, my mom is still around. She's 91, but now in a hospital bed in a wheelchair. Could, we've seen her walking differently early, early on yeah. and using things like Intel RealSense and, and computer vision and AI to detect things and just say to her, don't even tell anybody else, we're noticing this, do you want to share this with your doctor? Yeah. That's the world I think, that, what we're trying to do is lay this out as version 1.0 so that when folks like us are around in something like decades from now, life is so much yeah. more better for the options and choices we have. It's really interesting, you know, I liked um, kind of the theme here. There's a lot of day-to-day -day problems that people like to solve, and then there's like the new industrial problems that are emerging, yeah, that yeah. are opportunities, and then there's the save the world kind of vibe. <laughs> there's help people, make yeah. things positive, right. you know, solve the climate problems, yeah. help people. And so we're kind of at this new era, and it's beyond just like sustainability and you know, bias, it's all got to get done. A new tipping point around the human aspect of things. And you do it economically. I think sometimes you think that, okay, well you're just doing this because you're, you're socially motivated and doesn't care, you don't care how many you sell it to, just so you can accomplish it. It's their link, the, the yeah. cheaper that we can make this, the more people you can yeah. impact. I think yeah. you're talking about the kids today is the work we did at Lego in the end of the 90s, you made a, a robotics kit for 200 bucks and millions of kids yeah. did that. And they, Pie, I yeah. mean, you add accessories yeah. to it, make it developer friendly. Yeah, no, exactly, and we're getting all those requests. So yeah. I think that's the thing yeah. is like, get a new platform, learn what it's like to have this sort of capability and then let the market drive it, let the people sort of the folks who are going to be using it that are in a wheelchair or dealing with Parkinson's or MS or other issues, what can we add to that ecosystem? So you, it's, it's all about being very human-centric in yeah, that yeah. and making the other parts of the economy make it work for them. Make it so that the health system 
they get an ROI on this so that, hey, this is a yeah. good thing to put into people's homes. Well, and, I think you have the nice, attractive value proposition to investors. Obviously, yeah. robotics is super cool and really relevant. Yeah. Cool, cool and relevant, to me, always is nice to have that. So yeah. check that. Right. Then you got the economics on price pressure, move the price down lower, yeah. open up the TAM to the market, right. make it more viable economically. Yeah, definitely, and, then, and what we're having, what's driving us that wasn't around seven, when we started this about four and a half years ago, I, my joke, and I don't mean to offend them, but after doing, pitching the vision of this in six months. For <laughs> don't, be, don't be afraid, we, can, okay. we don't know my, my, my joke, and I'm starting to see more bold about it, is that VCs don't think they're going to get old, they're just going to get rich. Yeah. And so, the idea is that they didn't see themselves in this position. And we're not gloom and doom. You can work out, you can be active, yeah. but we're living older longer. We are, it's, my mom is born in the depression, She's been in a wheelchair for five years. She might be around for a good another 10 to 15. And that's wonderful for her, but her need for care is really yeah. high. And the pressure on the family too. There's always, there's always collateral damage on all these impacts. There's 53 million unpaid family caregivers in the US. Yeah. Just in the time that we've grown, been doing this, it's grown 4% a year. And it's a complicated thing. And it's, it's not just the pressure on you to help your mom or dad or whoever. It's the frustration yeah. on their face yeah. when they have to always ask for that help. So it's, it's twofold. It's give them some freedom back so they can make a choice. Like my classic example is my mom wants tea, my dad's trying to watch the game, he, she asks for it, it's not hot enough, sends it back. And that's a currency yeah, yeah. It, that she's losing and, and it's frustration as opposed to give her a choice to say, I'm going to do this on yeah. my own. And I, that's just- yeah, Or bring the computer over, do a FaceTime with the family, send it back, you mentioned the Alexa. Oh, oh, oh. There's so many use cases. Oh no, we talked about, uh, we talked about putting like a, a, a device with a kit, with a, a screen on it so she could chat and see pictures. And he says, I don't want to have this in my bedroom, that's my private space. Yeah, yeah. But if we could have the robot bring it in when it's appropriate and take Call it out. Call a retriever. That's exactly, that's fetch, the whole. Go fetch what I need th right the, now and then go lie down. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why we're called it Labrador. It yeah. doesn't lie down actually. But, but <laughs> well, it, it lowers down. <laughs> it, it, it lowers down about 25 inches. That's about well, lying down. Super <laughs> so, exciting and yeah. congratulations. I know um, how passionate you are, it's obvious. Yeah. And being in the business so long, so many accomplishments you had, yeah. but now is a whole new dawn, a new era yeah. here. Oh yeah, no, I, I, we just said it was really, it was on, impromptu, it wasn't scheduled. There's a, a post circuit on LinkedIn where all the robots got together, you know, and they were seeing- <laughs> It's a hangout. And, no, and you're seeing stuff that wasn't possible. You look at this and you go, well, what's the big thing? It's a box on wheels. It's like, it wasn't possible to navigate something around the complexity of a home 10 years yeah. ago for the price we're doing. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. possible to have things that walk yeah. or spot that can go through construction sites. I, I think people don't realize, it's, yeah. it, it, it really is changing, and then yeah. we're, I think every five years you're going to be seeing this more bold deployment yeah. of these things hitting our it's, lives. It's super cool, and that's why this show's so popular. Yeah. It's not obvious to mainstream, but you look at the confluence of all those forces coming together, yeah. it's just a wonderful thing. Thanks for coming on, I really, so really, really appreciate it. Really appreciate it, thank you for success, the time. Great success, great demo. Yeah. Mike Dooley, co-founder and CEO of Labrador yeah. Systems. Check them out, they have the Retriever, uh, Future of Robotics here. It's all impact, all life on the planet and more space to It's the Cube coverage here at Remars. Stay tuned for more live coverage after this short break. Cool.